I'm telling you guys, something about this coffee on coffee, it's a hit. So I was watching the new Roddy Rich music video and I noticed they used one of the texture packs. They actually used the OG one, the one that I made almost two years ago now. And when I posted my story saying they used the texture pack in this video, I always get like a lot of questions like, how do you know it's the texture pack and not just a random paper texture and all this stuff? The reason is if you spend 24 plus hours ripping and scanning over paper, you kind of memorize the textures and like how they were ripped and stuff. So it's really easy for me to spot because I spent so much time, you know, ripping and everything. And I'll go on the computer and show you, we'll line up one of the paper textures exactly with the music video and it's gonna have the exact same folds and rips and scratches everywhere. So unless they just, decided to copy the paper texture exactly, like rip it in their own way, which didn't happen. They used a texture pack, which is sick. I was just out here a few videos ago and it's crazy how fast the leaves are changing and like falling and everything. It's really so cool to see that that product is still being used in mainstream music videos, which is even cooler. Like when I was making that two years ago, just starting the YouTube channel, really like taking it serious, I would have never guessed that that product that I was ripping and scanning over, spending like, like I literally have YouTube streams of me like 24 hours, like in total time, ripping and scanning over those papers that are unlisted. Uh, maybe one day I'll have to show them or something. But if you were there for that, definitely leave a comment down below. I know there's still a few people around. The channel was really small around then. I think maybe only a few thousand subscribers. It's really nice to see because I put a lot of time and effort into all the products I drop. Everything I drop, I would personally use in my videos and I personally do use in my videos. So it's, it's cool to see that other people also like the style of stuff that I make. Yeah, I'm excited to start dropping more stuff, getting into extensions and plugins and really just building a brand and creating products that people can use and help save time. Also get some really cool stylized looks. Also, the channel's closing in so close to 100,000 subscribers. So if you have editor friends that you wanna tell the channel about, that'd be greatly appreciated. I think it's only gonna be a few more days. Still waiting on Nick to upload that footage for the contest so I can see what it looks like raw. You guys are gonna have so much fun editing and everything. This dog. I've done two in the past, so this is gonna be my third one. I did one at 10K, 50K, now at 100,000 subscribers. This one's gonna be special. I'm really excited. People that are asking in the comments because I posted the BTS yesterday, we'll have all the rules and everything, and I'll do an announcement video. So make sure you have that notification bell rang, that way you don't miss out. Let's go up. So I know for sure it was used at this part right here. Before we break it down though, I wanna to prove to you, I was able to, before I even did this, know that this is my paper texture. You see how this little rip, like it's like tearing a paper there and then like all the lines and everything. So I was like, oh, okay. I know this is from my OG paper texture pack. Then I went and found the exact texture and you can see when I turn it on and off, it just lines up almost perfectly. I didn't scale it like the exact, but you can see like the lines are the exact same and everything. Like I said, I spent so much time making the pack and everything that I just can, I can see when it's which one, like I just know. So to do an effect like this where you manipulate it a lot more, I would say Photoshop is for sure the way to do it. You can do it in Premiere Pro, you can do it in After Effects, you can do it in Final Cut, you can do it in any of these editing softwares. They're just overlays where you can manipulate, but Photoshop gives you like the most options to create something completely unique. So that's what we're gonna be using. I would start off by taking a screen grab from like wherever you want it to transition into. So you can see here, for example, they took a screen grab of that clip and they kind of just have his arm coming in. It's his hand, then it's his arm and just slowly goes like that. So in Photoshop, I have a very similar screen grab to the one that you used in the video. And if I toggle off the whole image, you can see I masked out his hand, then a little bit more of his arm, body, his head, and then the rest of his body over here. Basically, I just add on a little bit more of his body each time. And you can see if I just turn off just his head, I didn't remask everything. I just masked his head and added it onto his body. So I'm gonna share the way I would mask out one of them. I'm not gonna go through and mask out each individual thing because it's just repetitive. You get the idea. Once you mask out one, you can kind of understand how to keep on masking out. So I personally like using the pen tool to mask out stuff in Photoshop but you can use the polygon lasso tool, the lasso tool, quick selection. There's a bunch of stuff in Photoshop that you can use to mask out. So what I would do is I would make sure I'm selected on the base layer or the overall image, go to the pen tool, and then just start masking around the area you want to pop up first. So for us, we'll just do the hand. I'm gonna go really quick just to show you. So then once you have that, just click make selection, click okay. I like to put the feather on zero just so it has that harsh line and it's not like feathered out. So then I would just click control J while that's highlighted. And then you can turn that off and you can see we masked out his hand. And then to expand on this, I wouldn't remask out his hand. I would just start where I know is already masked and then go over here, do his arm. Again, we're just going really quick. I'm gonna do a bad example of this, but then I would just go here like this, make selection, click okay. Go back to that base layer, make sure it's the base layer, not just his hand layer, and then click control J. And then you can see at first, if you just have his hand layer and then in combination with his jacket, you can see that pops up. So I went through and did that for five separate layers, his hand, his whole arm, his body, his head, 
and then the rest of his body. And then to get that paper crumble effect and make our photo look original, let's turn off all the layers besides the first one we want to pop up, which is his hand. And then inside the ultimate texture bundle, the first version, the OG one, under the paper rips and folds and paper rip folder, there are these 15 white rips you can see. So let's go and use paper rip eight. You can use any one of them. It doesn't really matter too much. I'm gonna drag it below. And I'm also gonna create a solid color layer just so we can see what we're doing for now. We'll toggle this off later, but you can see it just makes it a little bit easier on the eyes to just visualize what we're actually doing. Then I just like to line it up relatively close to what it would look like if it was wrapping around the hand. And one of the most useful tools for this whole entire style is the puppet warp tool. So while you're selected on the paper rip layer, go up to edit puppet warp. You're just gonna need to add a decent amount of dots. I go through and kind of just add them like horizontally all the way through. And then you can see you can start bending it around the paper. Just You just drag these dots and bend it around the paper. If you bend a little too much, it does start to warp it in a way that looks weird, but you can get away with doing a pretty decent amount without it looking weird. So I just like to kind of just bend it around and make it look like it's just wrapping around the hand. Then you can go up to this check mark up here, or you can just click enter to lock it in. And you can see we already have it ripped around halfway around his hand. Let's go and add a whole nother paper rip layer. I'm gonna drag this above the paper rip eight layer. That way it kind of overlaps here. And let's go ahead and add those puppet warp effects again. So again, just creating a bunch of dots where you wanna manipulate it. You can see how you can, can kind of like position it in a way where it goes around hand and kind of bends in in certain areas. This is probably the easiest method to get something around your subject. Then I would just go in the eraser tool you're gonna to have to rasterize your layer to do this. I would just erase these harsh edges. That way it just blends a little bit more and looks like they're all kind of one piece of paper. You don't have to, I think it's just something that looks a little nice. The eraser I like to use is Kyle Eraser Basic or Natural Edge from the Mega Pack from Adobe. Free for all Adobe users, just type in Adobe Mega Pack on Google, it'll pop up. You'll sign into Adobe and you can download it and import it into Photoshop just like that. And you can see down here, there's a little gap. So something that I would do to just fix that is I'd probably just use the clone stamp tool. You can hold Alt on your keyboard and select an area where you wanna sample the paint from and then you can just kind of paint in area. We're gonna go ahead and turn off this layer and export this as the first PNG. So just go to file, save, make sure it's a PNG and then I would just create a new folder like paper fold and then inside of that we can just name this one so we know it's the first one in the sequence. You can continue to use the same paper pattern but I found it looks a little bit like almost robotic when you do that but for us what we're gonna do is actually just delete these paper rips and we're gonna have these two layers selected and we're just gonna create a whole new paper rip around it. That way it looks a little bit more new and just original. I find it looks better. Once you have to start wrapping around a lot of stuff. I like using the longer ones. That way it just is easier to wrap around. And again, it's literally the same process all the way through that puppet warp tool. When you have to wrap around a lot more stuff, it's better to add a bunch of points. That way it's just a little bit easier to manipulate and kind of get it to go exactly where you want. See how we're kind of bending around all these wave areas. We do have to still put this below that layer, but that's all right for now. Click okay to lock that in. Let's drag that below the other layer here. And you can see how it's around this. I'm gonna go through now and do this for the remaining three layers. That way there's five total and then we'll check back once I'm back in Premiere Pro. Doing the paper stuff is really fun to do because it just feels like you're creating something like completely unique every single time. Out of like all the effects I do and stuff, it's always the one that I go back to and just like have the most fun with when I'm creating something. Because at least for me, it gives me that element of like feeling like I'm doing some arts and crafts stuff from like school digitally. And when I was creating this, like that's literally what I was doing, arts and crafts stuff. I just scanned it in 4K. That way you guys don't have to go to the store and buy paper, markers, exacto knives, like all the stuff, the scanner. That's kind of what I was doing, but it's nice to have that digital version, like a digital scrapbook almost to do like arts and crafts. And I think it speaks for itself and that's why it's used in so many videos is because people like being creative with stuff like that. And it's like, it's been used in so many different videos like Polo G, Killeroy, Lil Wayne, Corday. There's been so many videos now that it's like almost hard to remember all of them. I gotta do a video like showcasing like all the times it was used in really popular videos. That way you guys can see and like, it would just be a cool thing to like have documented for myself too. I don't even really know if I've been too clear on exactly what I've been using. I think the people that have been following the channel for a while know what I'm using. Using. But if you're new here, I'm using one of the products that I created almost like two years ago now. It's called the Ultimate Texture Bundle. It has, I don't even know the exact number, a bunch of paper textures, paper rips, paper folds, tape, basically everything you need to like create arts and crafts kind of look on your video, but all digitally done. I'm really proud of like what I've made because it still holds up two years later. Pretty much as realistic as you're gonna get for digital effects that are supposed to be looking like they're done like analog, like actually with paper rip, because it is actually just a bunch of paper scanned in really high quality that then you can use to manipulate. I'll have it link down below if you're interested. It's a really good way to support the channel. It's something that I've spent a bunch of time on. I have this version, this is the OG version, and then I also have another version called the Ultimate Texture Bundle V2 because it was so popular and so many people liked it. So, so now in Premiere Pro, like I said, you can do this in any editing software. My personal workflow almost all the time is Photoshop first, then the editing software I'm using. Sometimes I'll do Premiere Pro only and After Effects only. I just found that it's a little bit more limiting on like what you can actually do to manipulate just cause they don't have like the puppet tool as easy and like all these other stuff that I like in Photoshop, but it's really just whatever you're most comfortable with. 
So since we have five images, I want them to each last two frames. So we're gonna go back a total of 10 frames. So if you hold shift on your keyboard and click the back button, it's gonna go five frames at a time. So we're gonna go five and then 10. And let's drag in our first image and then we'll go two frames, one, two. If you want your images to start off two frames long, there's an easy way to do that by going to edit, preferences, and then go to timeline, change that to two and then frames, make sure it's frames, not seconds, and then click okay. You might have to restart Premiere Pro for it to like lock it in. And now when we play that, we have this really cool paper crumbling effect. I I do realize that I want one frame to play kind of right here. I'm actually just gonna take this whole entire sequence and move it over one frame. That way it will play for one frame here. Yeah, there we are. And you can see later on, they actually do a really cool transition here because there was three Roddy's here. What they did is they kind of offset the paper rip effect. On this clip, they have the hand, the arm. On this clip here, they have the hand, the arm, and the body. And then on this clip, they have the hand, the arm, body, and the head. So they basically just offset the transition by two frames each and just moved it to the side. So to get something like that, I would just duplicate this clip, actually put it in a nested sequence, and then go to speed and duration and reverse the speed. That way it starts off opposite and it kind of folds out. And then I would just move the position over to this clip here, duplicate it, go two frames forward and then move it to the right and then reset the position so it's here and then go two frames to the right again, duplicate it, drag it over here and drag the position so it's over this clip of Roddy. So now when we play that, you can see we have a very similar transition to them. If you guys haven't watched this video, go watch it. Two new Roddy videos that come out. I don't know if 20K Visuals has done both of them, but I know he did this one, super dope. I've like always been a fan of the visuals Roddy gets because they they always seem to be pretty clean. So it was really dope to see the texture bundle be used in the video. Like I just watch it because I like his videos and I like his music to be watching it and then be like, oh, yo, that's my product. It's really sick. So it's always cool to see my stuff be used like two years later even. That's all I got for you guys in this one. Go watch this video right here. It's the behind the scenes for the 100K music video editing contest that I with Nick Welch and an artist named NXG. It's really dope, it's a fun vlog. It's a totally different style video than most stuff and be sure to be subscribed because the 100K editing contest is real soon. Peace.